is Edward Chuka, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design and laser cut your very own birdhouse. This one's designed for local bluebirds, and it has a poem written on the inside that you can kind of see through for the little fledgling to climb up. Some information about steam, and there is the information about the poem and why it's on the inside, and then there's the first hundred digits of pi for ventilation and drainage, and there's lots of little locks and clasps and mounts and it's gonna be designed in Fusion 360. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design and laser cut a nest box birdhouse uh, that's very customizable. You can change the size and dimensions of any of uh, the height, depth, width, uh, the whole size and all that, uh, the notches, um, and you can control all that. Uh, but before designing a birdhouse, it's important to do some research. Uh, the first one that I designed, I built it like this and I have a perch here. And then after a little research, I learned that that's the worst thing you can do is have a perch here. Um, that actually gives predators an advantage and not the little birds. So um, the research that I found is done by a local group called uh, the Burke Mountain Naturalists and they have put together a comprehensive guide on how to build nest boxes for common birds in, in our Tri-Cities area. If you're not living in this area, I recommend you research your own, your own area to try to attract local indigenous species rather than uh, invasive species. So there's a lot here about how to design a good nest box and uh, what species you know need. So I'm going to do this uh, tutorial for the Carolina Wren. It's uh, one of the smaller birds. It's a small songbird but it's got a mighty voice and can learn about a hundred songs so that's pretty impressive. Uh, there's lots in here uh, about dimensions and where to put it and materials and all sorts of things that you can take into consideration. Um, so I've designed a number of birdhouses. Uh, I've done the Bewick's Wren. I've done the Chickadee. Um, the robin is very different. It's like wide open on one side, so you really have to pay attention to what these little birds need. This is for a purple martin. It's much larger, longer, and the hole is more of a rectangle at the, at the bottom. Uh, those are just designs. I didn't actually cut them. This one I did cut. It's a bluebird uh, box. This one is now hanging in our school garden and uh, I added lots of interesting things to it. Uh, I did the first hundred digits of pi on the bottom for drainage and ventilation. I've got a poem on the inside of the front uh, to act as a ladder for the little baby bird to climb up once it's becoming a fledgling and, and getting ready to fly. It's a little poem written uh, to the bird and there's a little bit of information on the top of it and, and information about steam at my school um, and so I really had a lot of fun designing this one and uh, there's some information about uh, why the poems inside uh, on, on one of the outside sides okay so I've actually got an animation And that right hand side uh, comes in last and there's a little notch for it uh, because you're supposed to clean out your bird boxes annually in the fall. So you can do all that within Fusion 360 to animate your model if you so choose. Okay, the one I'm going to make with you here uh, after experimenting many different uh, combinations of locks and different things, uh, I'm kind of Moving on to having two notches on each side close to the edges for strength. Uh, the one that I put out there, uh, I've noticed in a few short weeks of winter weather in Vancouver that this uh, flush fit here is, is good to avoid predators, but it's warping a little bit and doesn't fit as good. There's a little bit of a gap down there. So uh, the next one that I uh, make would have, have notches there as well. Uh, so let's start with a fresh file, new design. So I'm gonna start a sketch on the right hand side and following the guidelines for the Carolina Wren, my units are currently set into millimeters, but I do want to do it in inches. So you can change that right here. 
from millimeters to inches. Okay, try that again. Line and um, height front equals six. Okay, and I can zoom out a little bit. And then the bottom is going to be four inches. So this is um, depth equals four. Okay, and then the back side is a little taller to have a slope for you know, snow and, and rain to, to fall uh, without pooling. Uh, so this one is going to be height back equals seven. Okay, and then the last line just connects. I can set dimensions. I'm gonna dimension it so it is centered upon the origin of this drawing so um, it'll always be centered. I can use that to my advantage for mirroring and things like that. So when I create two, it says it's over, over constrained, but I actually, I like that. So I check the box so I don't need to see it next time. Then I can make this dimension the same as that dimension and it will center it for me. And I think that's, that's good for now. And I'm going to, actually I could center it um, on either the front or the back. Maybe I'll center it upon the back as well. So I can, dimension from this point to the origin just place it down and then dimension from this point to the origin it's going to be a driven dimension and then I select my first one to make it equal to the second one and there we go that's the same so that could be useful all right so finish the sketch now I'm going to press E for extrusion the buttons right up here uh, the distance we're going to go symmetrical and it, Instead of half length, I'll do whole length. And so the distance is going to be the width dimension. Width equals four. Okay, so we're starting to look a bit like a birdhouse here. Uh, but really, this is just the volume I want to protect. This won't be my walls. This is going to be uh, what I build my walls around. So I press A, and it's going to bring up a appearances menu here and you can change the look I'm gonna make it into a glass so we can see through it okay that's going to help me keep track of my walls as well so now I can just uh, start extruding walls directly from this so I'll start with the top uh, the thickness of the wood is very important to this construction uh, the thickness of the Baltic birch that I have is 1 8 inch um, it might be a little thin, but um, it's supposed to be good in exterior, so uh, this is what I'm trying out. You could always change this value later with, if you have different wood. So new body, that creates now uh, my first body. I'm going to name it volume. And then this new one is going to be top. Okay, and then I can press E again, and I could extrude the front. And now I can just press T and hit enter once, and it always wants to join, so you're always gonna have to pick a new body. Okay, so that one is now the front. Okay, then I can press E again and extrude the right-hand side, and the distance is T, I hit enter once, and then new body, and okay. And that is the right side. Now I can change my perspective using the cube up here. So this one, I can press E and then do the left side T, enter, new body, okay. And then that one is the left. Okay, I can go and do the back now. E for extrude, T, enter. And I didn't take you there, T. Enter once, new body, and OK. So if it comes out clear, you know that you've actually adjoined it to the uh, volume. E, last one, bottom distance, T, enter once, new body, and OK. All right, I gotta name the back and the bottom. OK, now, 
this wouldn't really fit together very well. They don't actually have mating surfaces. They're just joined by an edge. So you're going to have to choose. Every junction needs one or the other surface to extend to cover over, and that's really where you can have some freedom. It's really up to you which one gets uh, pushed forward uh, and, and becomes the mating surface. So what I am doing is I'm going to press pull, and I'm going to do all four of the surfaces around the top, okay, so grab those four surfaces going around the top. Uh, the ones that all face backwards are all going to come backwards, so they're switched to the other side from there, and then uh, grab the bottom one, I'm going to pull that one as well, okay, and then the ones that face down. The other three so from the right hand side going down from the front going down and from the left side going down okay so I think and then there's the two ones that face front from the left and the right I'm going to be picking okay so I think I've got 12 of them good you need 12 there's 24 surfaces in all and 12 of them need to be extended uh, first I can just do distance T to see what that looks like and depending on how you're going to assemble this. Um, you can choose to just have everything flush like this um, and if you have thicker wood then you could put screws in from the side or something but with this thin of a wood I'm going to make notches instead. Also I'm going to do a second push pull for that very front surface uh, because I want there to be a protective overhang. I can give this a, a variable called overhang and I'll say one inch. Okay, and next I could put in a hole, sketch right on that front surface, create a circle, I'll just put it off to the side for now, and then I'm going to make a variable called hole equals, and for the Carolina Wren it's one and a half inches, and now I can use a constraint to make it vertical with the center of the origin, and then the height from the ground I should specify, it's different for every bird. And so I can specify from here and the recommendation was about uh, five, five inches. Okay, so finish that sketch and press E and now I can extrude the whole negative T this time backwards and it automatically becomes a cut. That's good. Okay, now I can turn off that volume. I probably don't even need to look at that again. But I want to show you that you can modify your birdhouse for any bird that you want by changing these parameters that I've been setting up. You can I'll shrink this so we can see a little bit better. And I could make the, you know, height um, of the front, you know, more or less. I could go seven inches there. I could change the width to be six. I could change the back side to be eight anything you really want, the whole height, whole um, diameter, any of those things can change. But I'm going to go back to my original uh, dimensions of, for the Carolina Wren. But this goes to show that you could make this now for multiple birds. Okay, so this uh, would be good if you had thicker wood. Oh yeah, I do want to show you what it looks like with um, maybe half inch wood um, where you could just build it like this and then instead of 1 8 inch you could put half and that would probably work better for using screws uh, to hold it together okay but I'm not using that type of wood I'm using thin laser cut wood 1 8 inch okay so that's why I'm gonna build in notches as well because this would not hold together very well you'd have to use lots of glue and they, they don't recommend using glue for the health of the birds so I'm gonna use friction fit notches instead um, I'm also going to change the amount of distance that I press pull. I'm going to go with uh, three times T. Okay, so it's three values of it's three eighths of an inch uh, in my case. Okay, so that looks pretty good and it gives room for these notches to come through. Uh, the most notches are going to be on the back. And so I'm going to start sketching there. You can turn on and off everything else probably, get rid of distractions. And I'm going to need um, 
couple of notches on one side, then I can mirror them. You can make them any size you want, and this is uh, something you could have as many notches as you want, and then any size that you want. I'm going to go uh, by defining lock equals one inch, and I'm just going to make all my locks like that. The other dimension is going to be three times T, three times T, just like those uh, edges. Okay, and then I can hit enter. And now um, you can specify any distance from the edge as well. I'm going to choose uh, the same as the lock dimension. So it'll be one inch from the edge. And now uh, the hole for the little tabs to fit in is going to be, um, I'll just place it down for now and then press dimension, D for dimension. So this amount is going to be half this lock dimension or two. Okay, and then the distance from one of the sides is going to be that dimension divided by two. So in other words, a quarter of the lock size. And then I need to specify how far away from the edge and it's going to be value T. That's where the uh, right side is going to fit in and also the width of the hole itself is also T. You can see why I made it just one letter. Okay, that's good for one. Now, um, I could actually mirror that in both directions since I centered it upon the back. So I think that's good for this one. And I'm going to press E. I'm going to extrude that. And distance is uh, negative T. And this time it's going to be a join onto this, this back side. So that should show me my notch fitting nicely. Okay, I'm gonna fill it, this one. Uh, it looks really nice when you round off your edges a little bit. But I'm gonna use T again, looks good. Okay, so now I can mirror that feature in both directions. So the object is, is not a body, it's a, it's a feature. And I wanna take the extrusion end and the fillet part and mirror it across. Uh, we could go side to side, so that's a YZ first, okay, and then we could also mirror again. The feature is going to be all three of those, and the mirror plane this time is going to be the XY plane, and okay. Now we've got four nice notches on the back, excellent. I want to also make the top and bottom notches uh, for hanging. These are really important. Um, so I'll start with a rectangle and I want it to definitely snap onto that. You can specify how wide you want. I think uh, one inch is plenty, so I can make it that lock dimension as well. Okay, so that'll be an inch and then I could make sure that it is centered upon the origin. That value could be just this one over two. That's another way to center things. And then I'm gonna specify the height. Uh, this time I'm gonna go for an inch and a half. Um, you could always come back to the sketch and change it. And then I like to have it rounded, so I'm gonna create a circle in here and I'm gonna use a tangent constraint to the left, top, and side. And that's good for now. And I'm going to press E for extrude. And I'm going to grab those two things and go with the distance negative T. And join is good. So there's a place I can mount. Uh, the bottom needs um, a nail kind of hole, uh, just a straight line for uh, so the box does not sway. So this one, again, you could put uh, L for lock, um, L, and I have to click it, and then the height could be maybe just one inch for this one. It doesn't need to be as big as the other one. The Diamond centering between here and here is going 
to be half of this one. Okay, so that's centered and I can finish this sketch and go E for extrude. Select the shape and minus T for distance joins, good, okay. So now I'm going to actually make the screw hole. So I'm sketching again on the back surface and I'm going to want a reasonably big hole for the screw so you could um, you could easily lift this off of a screw head so I think 0.4 of an inch sounds reasonable and then I'm going to use the vertical constraint with the origin line that up nice okay now I'm going to create another circle for uh, just when the, the screw is resting so this could depend on what what type of screw you have but mine are um, in millimeters three millimeters so you can Set it to be millimeters if you want. Okay, so that one's there. Now I can uh, move this one so it's coincident. This one, coincident with the radius of my top part. So that'll be the strongest spot. And now I can set a tangent for both my circles. Excellent, okay. And now I want some, I could just do a rectangle or two lines either way. few constraints coincident the line here with the center of that circle this one with the center of that circle and then we could do tangent this with this and this top circle as well that is perfect so now I can extrude get all these little shapes in there good and distance negative T and this time it's a cut and okay and then one last thing with this is I will fill it with the little sharp edges I like to get rid of most of my sharp edges and I'll use the value T that looks great okay the bottom part needs just a simple line for a screw a screw or a nail so sketch one more time on the back rectangle we'll make it snap here uh, the dimensions depend again on your width of your screw shaft so mine is a three millimeter so I can set that and it automatically converts it to inches and then make sure it's centered so I will dimension it with the origin that there and it's going to be equal to this one over two so I could always change my screw width and that will adjust accordingly the height isn't too important uh, maybe half inch five okay and then uh, I'll do a little circle here so the screw will sit uh, perfectly in here okay that's that press E and take away those shapes distance negative T enter enter okay that's good uh, maybe I'll fill it while I'm here uh, these sharp edges so I could go one two three and four and give it a value maybe T that looks very nice okay that's enough for the back now I'll move on to the bottom okay so we're gonna need notches on th the three sides that are remaining so it's going to be a hole eventually where the back goes through but then it's going to I want notches on the other three surfaces so I'm going to turn off the back and I'm going to sketch right on the bottom here okay so the front face is, is directly overhead here so I can start with that one and make Make a notch, or a lock, I should say, um, and my dimensions D. It's going to be L for lock. Enter, and then the distance away from the side is also the same. Oh yeah, this one I'm going to make it. This is the narrowest dimension. I'm going to make it uh, lock over two. 
So you can set them wherever you want them. And then I need my little hole for the key. Dimension. Okay. The keyhole is half of the lock width. Two. And then the distance from either side is going to be half of that again. So it's going to be this one over two. And the distance from the body is T. Distance inside the hole is also T. And the overall length is three times T, three times T. Enter, enter. Okay, so I can finish that one. And then I can extrude it, E, and then the distance is negative T, and join. Okay, I'll fillet that now, F for fillet, and the value is T, okay, enter. All right, so now I can mirror that one to the other side. So the most recent extrusion and the fillet itself, the mirror plane is going to be the YZ plane and then OK to that. OK, so we'll just make three of them. Okay, so I've created an extra notch here, so I can mirror it in the other direction. I'll fill it this one as well. And value T, okay. All right, I can turn that sketch eight off. All right, and uh, I can let the other fillet and mirror happen. There we go. And so I can create a fillets, just organizing them. So we have that one with that fillet, and then that one with that fillet. And then I can even move that mirror that direction, just keep my my items organized. Okay, so we're gonna create a mirror for the most recent notch. And we're going to go across the, it's XZ in this case. Okay, so we've got two there. Now I can mirror again, and I can take the extrusion, the fillet, and the mirror, and then I can mirror that all across the YZ plane. And now I've got all six notches that I need for the bottom and I'll fill it in. Nice. Okay, so I'll go back to my home perspective and then see what we've got. I think I'll do the front next. So the front is going to need notches off the back and the bottom. Just on left and right, I'm not going to do anything towards the top of this because uh, it's going to fit flush with that awning piece anyway. Uh, so I'm going to sketch right on the front. This time I can uh, do my notch dimension L for lock, enter, and then this one is three times T. From the edge, I'm gonna do for this one one, one inch, same as the lock. Hole, the keyhole. I can set T for that one and I can actually type it while I'm doing it here. Lock over two. There we go. And then the d distance from a side is going to be this one over 
two. And the width is set. To, we need the distance from the body. And that is T. Finish the sketch. E for extrude. And negative T for distance. Okay. And now I want to fillet those sharp edges. Fillet, edge, edge, and value T, and OK. OK, so now how I can mirror this left to right pretty easily right now because of the way the planes are. So I'll do that one first. So I'm going to mirror the most recent extrusion and fillet across the YZ. Uh, plane across the YZ, and that gives me two of them. Great, and now I want to mirror it up and down, but I don't have a plane in the middle. You can actually make one. So, under construct, you could do a mid plane. And so, what I want is a mid plane between the very top little surface and the bottom little surface. And it's going to create a tiny little plane right in the middle. Excellent. And that to then mirror the extrusion, the fillet, and the mirror. And then um, I create a mirror, and I've got all three. Select the plane is the new one I just created, and then it generates uh, two new ones for me. Okay, so now I can turn off the construction plane. Don't need that anymore, I don't think. Okay, we're almost there. The last is the left and right side. So I'll do the right hand side first. Let's go back to normal perspective. Um, it's gonna only need notches on the top part. So the front will go off, sketch onto the right. Uh, this one is not a rectangle because uh, the angle. So I'm gonna sketch it uh, myself. Just, I wanna make sure it's perpendicular. So I'm making it much bigger than it needs to be, but I just wanna be able to see that it's perpendicular all four times, all three clicks. Uh, so we've got that, and then I can dimension all the same kind of numbers. This is three times T. Times T. Enter, enter. Then the width is the lock dimension L. Lock. Okay. The distance from any edge, I'll do the same. Okay. The keyhole, I don't want it to snap to anything. I can see that at certain points it's making it parallel, that's good. Okay, that is perpendicular perpendicular again the last one probably won't be perpendicular uh, but I can make it a parallel to this one and that should fix it okay so dimensioning the width of it is half of the lock the distance from the body is T distance of the hole is also T and then the that one didn't take so I gotta try again here T enter enter got it okay then dimension this side is going to be half of the keyhole okay that is fixed in position and unfortunately I can't mirror this other one uh, right now I just have to draw
negative T for distance join. And now I can do my filleting F for fillet. T. Enter. Enter. Okay. Uh, turn on the left hand side now, and I can mirror these across, I believe. So I'm going to mirror the most recent extrusion and fill it across the YZ plane and then say OK. One thing is they are not attached right now. They actually created two new bodies. We got body eight and nine. So I can join them with a combine. So click on the left side first, then the two locks, and it is a join and don't, and have the key tools unchecked for this one. You don't want it to, those two extra bodies just sitting around. Okay, I think that's all the notches that I'm going to make. Okay, um, now the there needs to be room for these these locks to push through all these sides. So we're gonna to have to do a, a five combines here to get make holes for all these. So target body, top, tool bodies. We want the right hand side, the left hand side, and the back. And then okay. And now if I just look at it, it's okay. There we go. I should have five holes in the top. Excellent. The next one I'll do, I can turn off the top. Do the right hand side combine the right hand side? It's going to lose it from the bottom, from the front, and from the back. All cuts, keep the tools for sure, and okay. Next, I can remove some material from the front. It's got to lose because of the bottom only. Uh, so if I turn, if I do it combine. It's the front losing material because of the bottom. Keep the tool. Okay, so now if I turn off the bottom, there should be two holes. Yes, good. Uh, the left side, I don't think I've done the left side yet. I can turn off the right, turn off the front. Yeah, there's nothing missing from the left. So I need to combine. The left side is going to lose because of the front, the bottom, and the back. And okay. All right, so I think I've done all of my combines. Excellent. Uh, so I'm going to make a key and you don't have to model all the keys. You can just make one um, and then multiply it. Now I want to sketch right on the right hand side here. Okay, so you could use many style of key rectangles. Okay. All right, dimension from here is going to be T. And from here to here, you can make it 3T, three, three times T. distance from side to side is going to be the same as the lock. Enter. And the distance here is the same as that hole, which is half of the lock. Okay, and we want it to be centered. So I could do a little trick here. I'm going to dimension that so I can just place it down. And then I'm going to dimension this side, and it's going to be a driven dimension. And then I can make my first one the same as the, the driven one. I'll center it. Okay, a couple other things I could do. Uh, there's a collinear constraint. I could set it up so it's right in line with that hole that I made. That would automatically make the other side in line. Um, I could also set collinear constraint to this one and the opening here and that I'll put it in place I like that okay finish sketch and extrude uh, sometimes you might have to change the perspective to make sure you get that middle piece it doesn't select automatically and distance is T and it's not a join this time it is a new object 
okay. And there I have my little piece, but I want to fill it those, those sharp corners as always. Just put it back to perspective and F for fillet. Grab the four corners. This will make it easier to fit in there as well. Value T, enter, enter. And that looks looks pretty nice. So I need lots of those. Uh, I can't remember. Let's see. Uh, 8 plus 8 is 16 uh, plus 2. Um, you could even make a notch in the bottom, which I've, I've done before. Right here, you can make another notch if you want more strength uh, but whatever number you need so 8 16 18 if I need 18 I'll do a rectangular pattern this time it is a body select that little key the axis uh, could be the X axis and I want uh, spacing between them I'm gonna want 18 overall and the distance I could go three times T. Let's space them out a little bit. And that's and this one I don't need any there in that direction. And <clears throat> okay. So now we have lots of, of keys. Okay, uh, some other filleting that I'm going to do just to minimize all the sharp edges. I'll do the front after because it's going to be a bigger fillet, but these are just the little ones. Go to the back side. Okay, value T. Let's see if I got them all. You can always uh, add more later if you forget some and then okay all right now the front I'm going to fill it a larger amount let's go um, one inch okay that looks nice turn off the top and I want to sketch right on the bottom so we need drainage uh, for these little bird houses, they have to get rid of the rain that may get inside. So I'm gonna sketch right on this bottom. And I've done uh, interesting things like put the first hundred digits of pi here as, a bunch, as many holes if you want, or you could just keep it simple. Make a small hole here, size doesn't matter too much. And then uh, that's all you would need. And then press E for extrude and the distance negative T Now I can do a circular pattern with that to get all four corners covered. Uh, this time it's not a body, it's a feature. So I can select the recent extrusion. The axis is the Z axis and I want four. And this time it is a full revolution. I get four little holes and okay to that. So there's some drainage and ventilation uh, for the little bird. And then on the sides, I, I do want something. So going to sketch right on the right hand side we want uh, ventilation to be able to escape here uh, so I'm going to first of all make a line from corner to corner and then I'm going to offset that line down by 0.1 of an inch and I'm going to be clever here and just include some text on a curve and I'm going to Write the word vent and 0.2 inches with lots of spacing, 800 spacing between here, it spreads it out. And then I can say okay to that, extrude those letters right out of there, minus T for distance, enter, enter. It actually just cuts the little letters out and they become the vent. And I'll do the same on the left, I can't mirror this one.
Another couple of things, I can change the appearance of my bird box to a wood. I like this first one, bamboo light. Uh, I think I'll select all of them first, then drag it on to any of them, and then... That looks nice. Okay, press escape to get rid of that one. And um, for annual cleaning, you need to have one side that's easy to remove. Um, so I'm going to make a couple of uh, notches here so I can take off the right hand side. I just need a couple quick lines. all I need and just extrude those two shapes negative T okay and there we go so that side could be removed by just removing the keys and then pulling it outward okay other things are to make you know, kerf lines or some sort of um, marks on the inside of the front uh, for the little baby bird to climb up. Uh, in the one that I made before, I did a poem on the inside of the front face. Okay, so the little birdie could actually climb up. There you go. So the first hundred digits of pi where the drainage might be a little excessive, but the uh, poem is something. So you can get really creative now, you can change the size and shape and uh, add lots of flair to your nest box. To laser cut this to perfection, um, Fusion has a really cool tool that ac accounts for kerf. Kerf is the material that is removed uh, when you're doing a cutting process. So whether you cut with a drill bit or a laser or anything, it's going to remove some material. So these examples are the kerf that you lose. So uh, laser is, is a pretty fine kerf. It's, it's less than other methods, uh, but still, if you want things to friction fit, you really have to pay close attention to exact specifications. So Fusion 360 has got a tool for this. It's quite cool. Uh, first, I have to select everything, avoid including all those little keys and then I'm going to right click on any of them and create components from the bodies and it turns into a component which is now a cube instead of a cylinder so it gives it its own origin and other useful things uh, then I'm going to do an arrange tool I think I can select them first or after probably so if I select hold down shift get them all under modify arrange this is exactly for production like laser cutting. Uh, the envelope is basically the size of the, the wood that you're using. Um, the wood I have is 12 inches by 20 inches. Um, you can set an offset which just sets it apart from your model. Um, and then um, I need to select a plane. Okay, so it's waiting for a plane. And it could be any really, I guess, but XY is what I'm gonna use. And then it's going to calculate all that. And then I can hit OK. And then I have it offset, so it's way over here. Um, so this would be a very ideal kind of layout. You can even make it a little bit tighter. Uh, it has uh, distance between bodies is set a little bit high right now, but it's not too bad. Uh, so you could cut all of that from one uh, sheet of the wood, and then I would have to do another cut with this one. And the best way to go about that, I have found that you go to the manufacturer tool and we can do a setup, a new setup. And we select our models. It's, we're gonna have to select every, all of them uh, from the one cut and don't do the other envelope at the same time. Okay, and now I can set up my cut as a 2D profile, and we need to select a tool 
Under cutting tools, you're going to want to select laser cutter. And then have a default laser cutter, which actually works pretty good. The kerf is set at 0 0.015 inches, and I found that to be quite good, um, but might need to tweak it a little. Uh, but I'll select that tool. Okay, the geometry that you're going to be tracing, it's you need to select all of them. And I have generally gone with the face contours, sometimes it'll select the loop. Uh, but I'm, I've been doing the face contours. And then it's smart enough to know uh, to bring the laser a little bit to the side um, to allow for that curve. So your final product is the exact size that you intended. Uh, so when it has inner notches, it'll actually, the laser will adjust inwards. Uh, but when it's like the outer perimeter, it will adjust uh, outwardly. Okay, go down over here, a few more. white okay, did I get them all? still two more okay okay I think I got them all don't do the uh, one from the other envelope okay uh, the passes is where it'll tell you which side it'll go on I've just left it as the defaults and I think that's all fine so I, then I just say okay so it's going to calculate the tool path and now I have all the movements that it's going to make and everything. I could even preview it and simulate it. I'm just gonna go to post process and you can give it a file name uh, like Carolina Wren. Um, the post select AutoCAD DXF tool, at least I did. Uh, I think it's important to select your, this was, might've been in document unit, but I suggest putting it in inches. Uh, and then I think I had to click on this only cutting one, otherwise it would actually show me, it would actually try to cut the, uh, some of the extra movements. So when I post this, successfully posted, I can then uh, work with my laser cutting software. In my case, it's a laser box. I can just start a new project and import and there we are, Carolina Ren Nest box just made open. And I have to specify my units. So I can rotate this 90 degrees. And there we go, we've got a perfectly laid out laser cut with the kerf adjustment ready to go. And that's the one that I that I cut. And that's it.